Hello, we're here for more Happier, a podcast where we get more happier. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, Gretch. Hey, what? Show me your t shirt. What is that? Oh, I am wearing my Fantasy Island t shirt. Uh, welcome to Fantasy Island because we finally got our premiere date for season two. Yay. Which is, yes, it's January 2nd, Monday, January 2nd Ooh. at 8 p.m. So I'm that's writing our time that down. Slot. Monday's at 8. Excellent. Very excited. So, yeah, of course, I'll be mentioning it a dozen times between oh, yeah. now and then. <laughs> of course. And this is for people who are on YouTube. You can go to YouTube if you want to see. I'm wearing this hey, is a t shirt you gave me for, for, I think, for my birthday several years ago. It's a bluebird wearing a Santa hat on a yes. like snowy branch. I was so happy when I found that t shirt. I still remember buying it. Oh, yeah. I have my ketchup t shirt. I have my salt t shirt. I have my, my hat. Well, your upholder t shirt I made for you. Yeah. And then I've got some jackets and hats that are different TV shows. You're like half my yeah. wardrobe. It looks, still looks great. It, I love it. Today, we'll talk about my exciting realization about audiobooks and an easy and free way to make an event feel more special. But first, something making us more happier. Elizabeth, how about you? Yes. Yeah, so, okay, Gretch, this is something making me both more happier and extremely terrified. Okay. <laughs> As many things do. Many things are like combo. Yes, drum roll, Adam and I and Jack are hosting Christmas this year. Okay. Okay, we have never Huge. done this. So every other year where we're either in Kansas City at mom and dad's, obviously, yeah. Yeah. or if we're here with Adam's family, we've always been either at his parents' house or at my sister-in-law Michelle's house. Mm -hmm. And this year, Adam and I are hosting. Okay. So we, I have never hosted Christmas it feels like a major rite of passage. Yes, it does. It feels, you know, my hostess neurosis. We all I have don't, it. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I want it to all be pleasant and good and fun. I'm happy because I think it's exciting and I think it'll be really fun for Jack for Christmas yeah. to all be centered around our house. Yeah. And God knows I have a lot of decorations. Yes. We both have a lot of decorations now it's going to be a little tricky with the dogs because i have to put them where they can't get to them and destroy them ah. but i'm going to have lights put up on the house i'm really going to go the whole nine yards here Good. but i am really like wrapping my head around it mm -hmm. it's not like i'm not without major um Trepidation. Tre yes. I don't want to say dread. That's too strong. But trepidation, fear, nerves. But it's also making me happier. Yeah. Presumably the family wouldn't allow me to do this if they didn't think that we could pull right. it off. That's right. That's right. It's, 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 uh, it's a gesture of faith. Yes. Well, so two questions. Yeah. Well, one observation and one question. One observation is that year after year, like on your 22 for 22 or 21 for 21, you often list something related to entertaining yes. more, hosting more. So there's definitely, you know, part of you resists it and part of you is eagerly reaching out for it. So this is yeah. good. Like, you yeah. know, your tablescapes, et cetera. Yeah. But so with the family, is it something where it's very clear, like we do this at at 6 p.m., we do this, and at 8 p.m., we do that? Like, is it very structured and predictable and you're just where it's all happening? Or is it like you you there's a lot of flexibility or it depends year to year or who's hosting? Kind of both. How much of it is sort of a cookie cutter? It's I wouldn't say it's cookie cutter at all, but there are certain traditions. Now, I will say like we we'll always eat tamales. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the good news. Michelle, my sister-in-law, was like, I will still make them tamales. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness. So I don't have right, to right. worry about the tamales. Okay, she's very, okay, that's good. Because that's a yeah. major undertaking. Yeah, So there's right. certain yeah. things, but but it's not so like, okay, we have to do this and then this and then this. Right. But there's, you know, like all families, certain things are just what we do every year. Yeah. Well, I think that actually makes it easier. Yes, absolutely makes it yeah. easier. So yeah, I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. Yes. It'll be different. Yeah. Uh, it's an adventure. Just like yeah. getting the dogs was an adventure. Yeah. Hosting Christmas is an adventure. So. Well, and it will. It's one of these things like now you'll get all your decorations up and out and all yes. that. I mean, it's nice to have something where you're like, well, 
uh, if you're teetering on whether or not it's a reason to do it. Very so that, true. That feels good too. Because I think last yeah. year I really used the dogs as an excuse not to get out a lot of decorations and that it's mm-hmm. way more fun to have the decorations out. So yes, this will mm-hmm. absolutely inspire that. So anyway, I will, of course, I'm sure be talking about it a lot because it's step right. by step. It's going to be There will thing. be gold stars and demerits <laughs> exactly. that will come from it. Probably both. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's well, making you more happier? Okay. So one thing I think about a lot is technology in some ways is good and in some ways is bad. And sometimes it makes us happier. In some ways it makes us less happy. And so I'm always like, okay, we want to be in control of it. We want to think about using it for the good and and then eliminating it for the bad. And I was thinking that one way that it does make me happier for myself and also because it makes Eleanor happier, my daughter, is Google Maps. Mm. So Google Maps is on your phone and it's a great map. Now, the thing about Eleanor is she does like you say some people don't have a good sense of direction. I would say Eleanor has like almost no sense of direction. She doesn't have a strong she just she just she yeah. has to figure it out. She yeah. has to know where she's going. She can't be like, "Oh, I'm just going to retrace my steps or I've done this a few times or I sort of have an intuitive sense of like I mean, even things like the grid of New York City, like we live on the grid. Everything is numbered, both up and down and left right. and right. Yes. And it took her a long time to get that figured out. Wow. So she, yeah. she really does not have a good sense of direction. And I, I remember talking to a friend who didn't have a sense of direction. She's like, listen, you got to tell her she's got to get good at Google Maps. And of course, it's sort of risky because you might be in a place where you don't have access to it and blah, blah, blah. And that's absolutely true. You want to remember that this isn't something that is like gravity, that you just it's always going to be operating yeah. at all times. But a lot of the times you have Especially it. Especially in New York, where she is the majority of the time. Especially in New York City. Right. And they're like, tell her, get good at it. It's a skill where you understand it. And I saw this when we were in Paris together because I was just sort of like as the parent leading us around. And then I realized like Eleanor was actually much more able to sort of quickly figure out because I have to like look up, look down, look up, look down. Is this going backwards? Yes. You and I have walked the wrong way in Google Maps, like 20 minutes the wrong direction. I'm going, wait a second. (laughs) Wait, wait a second. Something's going terribly wrong. Right. So and then even just like checking and and so so I will say that for her, it's just so much contributed to her having a sense of confidence and independence and just feeling like almost like I can go anywhere in the world because she feels free. Yes. Whereas I think before she would have felt very uneasy. Now, you could have said, oh, well, you could do that with a paper map. Maybe then you would have it in your head. Maybe. Right. But maybe not. Or maybe the world. Maybe not. Maybe the world feels smaller to you or the the world feels more intimidating to you. And I see that she really has put in the time to get good at it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so hard to remember to be grateful for just the everyday things, yeah. those little things we take for granted, like, I don't know, electricity yeah. or something. And then you think, oh, my gosh, this is actually really like a boost. Well, I completely relate because I have a terrible sense of direction. Also, I don't like to drive. And if I don't know the parking somewhere, I'm very hesitant to go there. I like to know where you park because I don't want to be faced with like difficult parking Ah. because I'm not good at parallel parking and all this. So um, it's, it's in that same world. And is, is that something you can look up online? Like, is there like parking you information? You often can, yes. Yes. Oh, interesting. Or I have Sarah drive me, which also right. happens <laughs> right. a lot. Right, right. But so I relate. Yeah, that inf- right. information makes you feel more confident and free. Right, exactly. Exactly. So that's wonderful. Yay, Google Maps. Okay, Gretch, coming up, you've been meaning to tell me something about audiobooks, but first this break. Okay, what have you been meaning to tell me about audiobooks? You know I love audiobooks. Okay, so this is the thing, Alyssa. This is what I've been meaning to tell you. So you have been encouraging me for years to listen to audiobooks because you and I both love to read, and you're like, there are all these books that I can listen to and that I enjoy listening to. So, and I've tried. Like, I tried listening to a novel, and I just can't follow it. I just I just simply cannot follow a novel <laughs> If I'm listening to it. And then you're like, okay, what about nonfiction? Then I was listening to interesting nonfiction and I can't follow that. And then you were like, what about a celebrity memoir? Maybe you could listen to that. And I tried that. I'm like, I, I really, I don't, it's like, I just, I can listen to a podcast and I can listen to a book that I've already read, but I can't listen to something new. And then I realized that by restate identifying the problem, I found the solution as one often does. Mm. And the problem is I can only enjoy it if I've already read it. Yeah, so that's what you can clue in on. 
That's what I conclude on because here's the thing. I love to reread. I love to read, but I love to reread. And I especially love to reread the books of my childhood. Like these are the books. Stephen King had something like it's the books from childhood that make the touch our hearts. Mm. And I was like, 100 percent. I agree with that. They they have a special resonance for us. But I often don't do it because I have all these new books that I want to read and all these adult books that I need to read or want to read, whatever. And I'm like, do I have time to go back and reread Heidi uh-huh. for the 15th time? But I'm like, I could listen to the audiobook because since I know it so well, I can listen to it. Mm-hmm. Like I can listen to and enjoy a book that I know. And once I had this realization, I listened to Understood Betsy, Aww. which I love. I'm listening to the Chronicles of Narnia, well, which I love. That's a good one. Right. And the thing is, it's a pleasure. It's rereading. And so it's the pleasure of rereading. But it is true that I'm noticing things listening to it that I that I didn't pick up before. And I also think that if I'm rereading a book that I love, I tend to like skip ahead to my favorite Mm. parts because I'm just like, I I want to get to the part where they find the chess piece in the garden. I want to get to the part where they realize that hundreds of years have passed and they're back at Care Paravel or what, or like, I want to get to the part with understood Betsy where she says, this is the smartest, grittiest thing a child has ever done. And I don't care if she hears me say so. Like, I want to get to that part, but then I miss out on all the other parts. Like you want to experience the whole thing. And by listening to it, I have to like go through the whole thing. I could skip if I want, but basically I listen to it. And so I'm experiencing it in, in a new way and I'm actually noticing things. Okay. Yeah. For instance, if you really know your your silver chair by C.S. Lewis, as I do, there's a there's the part at the beginning where they're talking to the Parliament of Owls, and in reading it, I didn't realize how all, everything they said was kind of hooting. Oh, everything kind of rhymed oh. and kind of had a hooting thing. But the way it was read, it was like to who to who. Oh, that's, that's true. funny. And so I'm like, I never knew, I never noticed this before. So you're, yeah, a good reader can really add a lot to a book. Yes. So that's, yeah, that's part of it too. Well, I am happy because you know, I have been nagging you about audiobooks yes. for years. Yes. By the way, also, I've been getting Sarah lately to listen to celebrity memoirs. Um, I've gotten her on that. So I just go around trying to find what everybody likes in audiobooks to get yeah. the pleasure, because it really is just why not have that pleasure in your life? I- exactly. And I just wonder if like people just process information differently. And so they, you yeah. know, you kind of have to experiment maybe. Well, and if it hadn't been for you, Elizabeth, holding up a model of like how much, and then I see how you get through these books. Yeah. I mean, you'd sort of be like, who's got five hours to listen to, you know, the silver chair? And it's like, if you feel like listening to it, like you find the time, yes. you know, and, and when it's, you're like and it's, putting on makeup and all getting dressed yes. and walking to the subway. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think part yeah. of it with you is that you take a lot of notes and you never know when you're going to want to take a note when you read. Exactly. Even, no matter what yes. you're reading, you tend to take yes. notes. So this way and having it be something you've already read, you're yes. not concerned that you're going to be doing that. And I think that's probably feeding into some of why you don't enjoy listening to things you haven't already read. No, it's a hundred percent true. A hundred percent true because I'm like, Oh, that fact. And so then I have to stop and take notes and it's just awkward. And then another thing is like, also when I like to reread like the favorite, my favorite parts over and Mm. over again, even with something new. So like, I I remember reading one of I was listening to one of the murder bot books which I had never read, in, I had never read in print. I was only listening to them the first time. And there was this moment where one of the, like this rope, this android says that change in priority is rejected. Mm. And in the context of the book, it's this beautiful, heart-rending moment where it, it's it's so meaningful when it's just said that way in this cold technical thing. But in the context of the book, it's very, very beautiful. And I wanted just out of sheer pleasure to go back to it over and over again, but I hadn't made a note mm, when it happened because I yes. hadn't really, you know, I sometimes you only realize later. Yeah. And and so then I was like, well, I how am I going to do yes. that? Yes. Like that in a is book, a I could have found advantage of audiobooks. Yeah. It's very hard to go back and find things. I, I, I agree yes. with you there. 
Yeah, and you're like, what was the name of the brother again? Yeah. And you're like, ooh, there was that paragraph where like they kind yeah. of cleverly did all the exposition. Yeah. Where is it? So anyway, so I think you're right. It's because it's very familiar. I don't have any of that anxiety yeah. because I'm like, I either know it or I could just write myself a note like chess piece and I would instantly be like, oh, I know where to go look that up. And so, um, yeah, I don't have that anxiety of the note taking Good. or like, ooh, beautiful quotation. I need to add that to my moment of happiness quotation yes. Yes. roundup. Yes. Yes. Yeah, All right, good. So. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying that. Now, what yeah. is um, this week's spotlight on a tool? Okay, this came from Eliza. And this oh. is, um, again, talking about how technology can make us happier. I had never heard of this. Eliza, have you heard of it? It's called Too Good to Go. No. Okay. So it is called Too Good to Go, and it is an app that connects customers to restaurants and stores that have surplus unsold food. And you can use the, you search the app, and you can buy un, unsold food that's about a third of the price um, and it's restaurants, bakeries, coffee shops, grocery stores, and it's stuff that would have otherwise be thrown out. And so sometimes you get like what's called a surprise bag and it's, you know, things they were planning to sell that day. Or then Eliza was telling me sometimes they'll have stuff that's set aside and it's like, okay, pick what you want. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can kind of control it. And then sometimes it's just like, luck of the draw. you know, you get what you get and you don't get upset. And the app makes the observation that about, uh, this seems unbelievable to me that about 40% of food goes to waste in the United States each year. That seems so incredibly wow. high. But, you know, it's a way to get good food at a good price. And I was surprised that it's in several cities, not just New York. Yeah, it's in several cities, and I think they're increasing it. Now, I did say to Liza and Eleanor, is this food that would otherwise have been donated to, like, a shelter or to a food bank? And so are you sort of, like, undercutting other people who might need it even more who would have gotten it. And I couldn't really figure that out, but they are both very scrupulous about that kind of thing. And they said that they did not think that it would have that effect. And that in fact, what it would do is it would mean that these stores, many of which are kind of like local stores that we want to support because, you know, they need our yes. support. They're getting money for things that they would otherwise not be able to sell. People are getting good food. Food is not going to waste. And so that it's just more efficient. Yes. Because that was my concern is right. I was like, oh, well, is this like all of a sudden some shelter yeah. is losing some like major source of food? But Eliza has used it and she didn't seem to think that was an issue. So anyway, good. too good to go. All right. I'm going to check that out. Okay, Gretch, coming up, I have a lesson from the Real Housewives, but first this break. <laughs> okay, let's listen. You love a lesson from the Real Housewives. I love the way that you are gleaning. Yes. You, you are my sister of the stage. And and I know now I know why you're this gleaning yes. these lessons. It's like Zen Master Real yes. Housewives. So what's the latest lesson? All right. Well, I've talked about the, all the girls' trips they take on yeah. the Real Housewives. And one thing I've noticed about these trips is well, a couple mm. of things I've noticed. Um, mm. One of which costs absolutely no money, and then the other might cost some money. But the thing is, okay. if you name something... Like what? Like, for instance, like say that I was going to Napa with four of my mom friends. If mm -hmm. I just named every uh, thing related to it, every email, like Wine Weekend 2023 or Wild Wine Weekend mm -hmm. 2023... <laughs> Yeah. Automatically, you're elevating an event. You're making it ah, not just like a trip yes. or if it was, you know, I have my dinner party. It's an event now. Yes, it's, it's an like event. a real event. I have my little yeah. dinner party group, which we, for some reason, named Tarts. And if I said mm -hmm. like Tarts Extravaganza, just naming it, yeah. that elevates it. Well, the fact that we named yeah. the group at all elevates it. Right. Yes. So it's like just yes. naming something, not just like, oh, birthday, but like something birthday, you know. Yeah. So that was my observation. Now, OK, if you really want to go for it and make something feel special, mm -hmm. give people some sort of welcome basket or bag at the mm. event. Well, or it's mm. like either a favor, let's say if it's a party, like a takeaway mm -hmm. favor or the, mm. Where I was really thinking about it is if you have like a weekend away with people, if mm -hmm. you make like if you give everyone like personalized pajamas or a T-shirt mm -hmm. that says Wine Weekend 2023 or a mug. I remember for Adam's birthday one year, his family made mugs with his face on them. Mm -hmm. It just really elevates something. And it's like a lot of bang for your buck, if you know what I mean. Well, hey, Elizabeth, well, you know what I'm thinking. What? is Encino Christmas 
2022. Oh, wow, yes. Like you need to, everybody gets an apron or everybody oh, gets like a mug. Yes, I love with mugs. With Nacho and Daisy. I love a mug. <laughs> you do love a mug. Yes, I do. Or like another Real Housewives thing I saw, which I think is actually pretty easy to do, is someone gave out cupcakes with people's pictures on them. Oh. And a lot of bakeries will do that, I think, pretty inexpensively. Ooh, so like if you had a sheet cake, which was like a picture from the last time, from last Christmas yes. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That could be really fun. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, once you start thinking about it, there's a lot of things you could do. And then if you tie a ribbon around it, I mean, you're elevating it again. <laughs> a nice, pretty ribbon. Right. And it just feels like luscious and deluxe. It's funny because I'm in several book groups, but I'm in one that's like an adult book group with like a bunch of uh, friends, all women. And like a couple years ago, or like several years ago now because of COVID, we all went to somebody's house, like country house for a, an overnight. And we called this the book club sleepover. Yeah, And all of our children were so enchanted by the idea of all their mothers going on this big sleepover oh, together. Oh, that's so cute. And it was funny. Yes. And again, it was like it, once it, we just sort of started calling it, oh, well, when is the sleepover? Yes. And of course, that was not originally it, that was not how it played out. Of course, the person who had us like had an elegant dinner and we yeah. all had, you know, we all talked about books and stuff. But but this is the idea that we were all like running around with our sleeping bags. It just it was really fun. And we still talk about, it. oh, we need to have another sleepover. Yes. It makes it into a special thing. And the sort of the more like if it's all alliteration or something like yes. that. or Yeah. Oh, alliteration. Sarah and I swear by alliteration. We were like, oh, where yeah. would we be without alliteration? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, alliteration is your friend. That's right. It's like put a bow on it. Make it bigger. Yeah. If somebody told me that the complaint of graphic designers is that clients always say, make it bigger, make it red. Oh, that's funny. And you're like, put it on a mug, put a ribbon uh -huh. on it. Give it a name. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's yep. hysterical. Yep. Oh, yeah. That is funny. Okay. Give it a name. Give it a name. Okay, Gretch, what is our quotation this week? Okay. This quotation comes from the diary of Eugène Delacroix. Hmm. Can any man say with certainty that he was happy at a particular moment of time, which he remembers as being delightful? Remembering it certainly makes him happy because he realizes how happy he could have been. But at the actual moment when the alleged happiness was occurring, did he really feel happy? He was like a man owning a piece of ground in which, unknown to himself, a treasure lay buried. You would not call such a man rich. Neither would I call happy the man who is so without realizing it. Mm. So Elizabeth, are you feeling more happier? Do you know if you're feeling happier or more yes. happier? I think I am <laughs> feeling more happier. This talk made me very happy. Uh. Thank you, Chuck. And get in touch. Gretchen's on Instagram at Gretchen Rubin and I'm at Liz Craft. Our email address is podcast at GretchenRubin.com. And for everything related to this episode, links, photos, and more, go to happiercast.com. Bye, Gretch. Bye, Elizabeth. The best time to start a happiness project is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Can you hear the basketball bouncing outside? Oh, I, I can't hear it. Can you hear it, Chuck? Uh, I can hear a little bit of bouncing, but I think it'll be okay. Okay. I think it'll come out yeah. in the mix. Okay. Oh. Fix it in the mix, as they say. Chuck, All right. Chuck, yes. Chuck put works it, his magic. Put it in post. Chuck, fix it in post. <laughs> yes. That's what we say on the set. There you go. Thank you for watching the podcast here on YouTube. If you enjoyed the show, please hit subscribe right below the video. It really helps new people to discover the show. From the Onward Project. <laughs>